Welcome folks, I am Technivorous. Today we are on the Raise 3D website. We are going to be looking at the new version of their slicer, Idea Maker. It was just dropped today. They are on version 4.0. I don't believe we've looked at Idea Maker since around version 3.2, but they are something I like to check in with occasionally, and I do keep it installed because there are some handy tools in there. If you'd like to get a hold of a copy for yourself, I will put this link down below, but it's pretty simple. Raise3D.com slash download slash so I will have a link to this down below let's jump right over to the slicer so when you first open idea maker 4.0 it's gonna give you the chance to pick between a light mode and a dark mode the light mode looks a lot like Kira so you may be more used to that and want to go with that but me personally I've chosen the dark mode and I like it so far this is the next screen you're gonna see and there are some options here this is their welcome screen I can tick this box right here and tell it not to show at startup, but for now I'm just going to leave it because we're going to look at a couple of these things. Um, there is the Raise Cloud, which helps manage the process and workflow, and there is the Raise Library, which is full of profiles, print files, and model files. I kind of want to check that out since I don't have a model in mind. So, again, it's going to bring us to the Raise website, and there are a lot of things so Mingda D3 profile FL Sun QQS profile mostly profiles I'm not really seeing any models I bet we could filter that in the search results but that's okay I have a model I can just pop in here so let's get back over to the slicer let's close this up let's go to printer and hmm, I do have my Ender 3 in here from last time. Let's go to Printer Settings and add a new third party printer. We'll do the ANET ET5. Build width. That enable fan controls kind of just setting a bunch of stuff up here right now this is uh, how you'll go about setting up your printer you'll put in all the parameters and huh, that's interesting so when you slice your file you can set it to automatically upload it to octoprint to the raise cloud or to the printer here I'm going to leave it at export to local disk because I am going to use my micro SD card save that close and my build surface has gotten larger that's good let's go ahead and see what I got for a model in here it's a bunch of my profiles we don't need those let's go to my messy desktop no desktop and yeah we'll take this one Hmm. It's not letting me drag and drop. That's dumb. So we'll do it this way. I got some right here too. So just grab. Part of a lightsaber. Simple part. It's telling me that this is one of the things I like. You have this uh, data sheet right here, and it's telling me there are 12 non manifold edges in here. Now Kira will tell you that you have a non-manifold edge, but it won't tell you how many, and it won't give you the option to repair them. So if I apply auto repair, bam, triangles 2080, edges 1060, non-manifold edges, zero. One of the awesome things about this software is the ability to just hit that repair button. One of the other cool things I like about Idea Maker is that I can do this. So if I decide that I want half of this, I just start a cut, hit start cut, and bam. Oh, got to select one of them, not both of them. I have two models cut on that exact plane that I put in there. So it's a great way for dissecting models and making them smaller or finding different ways to arrange them on the build plate. We are talking massive power in this slicer. So I'm not exactly sure what the exact updates are to this version. So let's see if we can go to, we're 
release notes. And they added that light theme, which I skipped. You might have it if you turned it on. Um, they added support blockers. They added the remove the overlap regions function. The region where the modifier overlaps the parent will be automatically deleted when slicing. It's interesting. Um, added a bunch of other stuff. Added minimal part size. Added automatically detect the small structure in the model. If it is smaller than the set value, the region will be automatically deleted during the slicing process. Okay, so that just gets rid of really tiny things so they don't end up as blobs when you try to print them. Uh, add share to idea maker library function. That's kind of cool. That's going to make the idea maker library fill up pretty quickly if people use this software because then you can just save your sliced thing to the library and everybody else has access to it. Uh, once you log in your account, it will remember automatically. That's cool. Octoprint integration. Yeah, see, that was a new thing. Uh, I got some guys over on the Discord. I'm going to have to show this slicer to you because I think they'll dig the way that it works with Octo Octoprint. So, um, move the preferences. There's a lot of changes here. I'm not going to sit here and read all of these to you because there is a ton of them. But we can go in and do a little bit more playing with the model here. So, let's check out some of these other options. can add modifiers of different shapes and move those into place to prevent support or overlaps or things like that. So that's kind of cool for getting exactly what you want to print. I don't want that in there anymore. Yes, delete. Um, the max fit button, obviously, will make it as large as it'll print on your printer. Holy cow, that would be a huge lightsaber. Um, if I want to make it smaller again, obviously I've got my scale options. Uniform scaling is on by default. That's about right. And obviously rotate, move, pan, view. Um, let's see. I think we need to slice before we can do that. So if I hit start slicing, it's going to ask me what printer I'm slicing for and what my primary extruder is. We're going to go with PLA. It's basically your primary material, not really your extruder. Um, and create platform will be skirt only, no support. Let's do 15%. I'm like 2.5 shells. I don't get that, but that's okay. Um, so we're going to use this profile and hit slice. It is pretty quick. And then I get my estimate here of time, estimated amount of filament, and estimated price. So I can export the file or I can upload directly to a printer, but I'm going to click preview. Now we're in that view mode. That's why I had to have it sliced first. So this works pretty much the same as Kira. I think the layout is slightly better here. Look at that gorgeous infill. There are ways to change the infill in here. I, I kind of skipped past it because I didn't click the advanced settings there. Um, but let's see as I step through, you can see it building up this layer and then you can scroll through the layers just like with Kira. Uh, you can cut it to show only the current layer which is kind of cool. Especially as you travel up and down through the model you can get a really really good idea of what's going on there um, and that's basically it I can now export to local disk or select this arrow to pick a different option if I had my micro SD card in here I could use it uh, I'm not actually gonna print this piece I am gonna play around and I'll find a model I want to print and throw it on the printer and we'll see how well this slicer prints a file but that'll be in the next video in this series so look forward to seeing what the prints actually look like and I'm telling you guys, this software is super powerful. Just that repair button alone uh, and the free cut option are two things that I think should be in every slicer, and they work really, really well in Idea Maker. So go ahead and hit that like button. Leave a comment down below if there's any questions you have about this software. I'd love to know what you'd like to see as I'm digging further and further into this. And, of course, yes, we will look at some models as well. Hit that subscribe button and... 
don't forget to ring the bell for notifications so we can let you know every time we put up a new video. I do a ton of videos on Kira. Once in a while, I like to foray out and check out the latest versions of other slicers. So on my channel, you will find Prusa Slicer and Raze3D's Idea Maker. You will find Kira. We're going to be doing a video on Creality Slicer coming up. We just did one of those a couple weeks ago as well, but I wanted to go a little more in-depth which is basically just a ported version of Kira, but we're not going to get into that now. That's going to be it for this video, guys. Thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Well, that's it, guys. That's going to wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers, and so far I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months, before you see this on the actual channel, but... They are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link. Check out our Patreon link. Leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.